Working on the ladder chief recently, and the struggle against warp parts continues. Adding pieces at the top front of the body, 101, the ladder support fit well, but 172 and 171, these were a different matter. They required some creative clamping. Being an L-shaped piece, 172 required clamping in both directions, with a pair of the wood blocks used for clamping the fenders to the cab, repurposed to span the open space in the middle of the body. Part number 171, the engine cover, also required a pair of clamps, and again one of the plywood pieces was repurposed to span the open space in the middle of the truck body. These were the easy ones. At the back end of the body, four separate vertical pieces have to be installed to support the stabilizer legs. The first one is easy because it lines up against the sides of the body. Medium sized clothes pegs hold the base of the next piece in line against the attachment rib cast into the floor and an elastic band and stir stick hold it vertical. Working towards the back of the truck, a compartment door is added on one side and then the third vertical piece was added. This time a brass tube clamped to the floor was used to provide a purchase point for the clothes pegs. A clamp was used on the other compartment door to take some of the warp out of the body. One change I made to the doors on this model was removal of the three vertical lines cast into them. Closer look at picture of the truck being modeled shows the doors being smooth with no ribs or any texture on them. Kit's compartment doors feature three fine vertical lines cast into them. I don't know if this represents an optional embossed detail that could be ordered from American La France or if it's AMT's version of the cast in markings that used to be provided on model airplane kits many years ago showing where the decals went. In any event, they weren't on the real truck so I removed them from the model using masking tape to protect the door latch detail. A bit of sanding stick work and clean up with fine sandpaper and the doors were good to go. I hadn't noticed this minor detail difference before getting to this stage of the assembly so I had to remove the ribs off the other doors on board the model but this wasn't so bad in fact it was easier on these compartments because the door latches were set further back from the raised lines. One side cleaned up, raised detail removed to match the picture of the one to one truck. The last vertical piece going in place with a combination of the medium sized clothes pegs and a pair of C-clamps to hold everything in alignment. For additional strength, I added a piece of 250 by 250 styrene strip in between the two vertical bulkheads to give them a little bit of extra stiffness where the stabilizers attach. Although AMT does provide floors for the compartments between the stabilizers, there's no back wall. This area is mostly hidden from view on the completed model, but for the sake of completeness, I cut a pair of compartment back walls from 30,000 styrene sheet. There is of course the usual warpage to deal with, and here a half inch square balsa block was a perfect size to fit in the stabilizer bay, allowing a C-clamp to close up the gap at the back wall of the compartment. Same thing on the other side, you can also see how I added some 80,000 square styrene strip in the corners for added reinforcement of the glue joint. Thanks for watching all the way to the end of this short update. A lot of clamping and chasing warped parts, but we are making progress. You can see at the back of the truck the stabilizers are installed. These are a separate modeling project in their own right, and they deserve their own update. 